Right. Uh, so, so we're ready now. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the episode of Connecting with David McManus. Uh, so, uh, we're ready now. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the episode. Whoops. That's just repeating itself. Okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. Welcome to the episode of Connecting with David McManus. This is episode number forty-four. And for those who haven't met me before, my name is Sam Lee, and I'm the founder of Connect with Confidence. And I'll be the interviewer interviewing David. So, how have you, how have you been, Mac, David? Very good. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much for having me on board and kudos to you for all the work that you're doing with Connect with Confidence too. I've been watching you on Facebook and on LinkedIn and I think you're doing a very awesome thing because there's a lot of people who need just to have a bit of self-confidence to be able to connect with others. So kudos. Mm, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. So yeah, uh, David, how was your uh, weekend? My weekend is great. I've, I've been living overseas for a bit, so I've come back to Australia. I'm in the process of renovating a house, uh, just catching up with friends uh, and I'm in Melbourne right now. So I'm originally from Sydney. Mm -hmm. And one challenge we have here in Melbourne is that our winters tend to be pretty grey and wet. So mm -hmm. any time that you see sunshine, I will head outside, whether it's a, a hike yep. or whether it's a mountain bike ride or something else and just, just enjoy the sun while I can. That's, that's how I re-energise. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, uh, yeah Melbourne's actually... Uh, colder than Sydney, I reckon. So I've been there before. So it's just, uh, yeah, Melbourne's a little bit more extreme weather. And I understand where you're coming from in terms of uh, when there's sunlight, make the, mo make the most out of it. <laughs> Correct. Mm. Cool. Sounds good. So uh, David, tell me a bit about your passions and hobbies. What do you like to do outside of work? Uh, well, it's, I've just touched on a few of them. Uh, I think uh, family, travel, uh, getting outdoors, enjoying life while you can. I mean, life is short. Uh, I couldn't be one just to sit in front of a TV or do nothing. I always, I've got a big to-do list uh, and I always try and tick off one thing after another. Finding if there's an opportunity to get out and enjoy the outside world, then, then that's what uh, inspires me. And I love everything from uh, kayaking to mountain biking to uh, hiking and just just generally traveling going somewhere different seeing new uh, cultures or places or things uh, it, it just inspires me that's good i guess you're very uh, very outdoor active i guess <laughs> you're not doing a lot of uh Look, I am. I wish I was actually fitter. I need to sort of work on that. I think I probably eat a bit too much and uh, I, I don't spend as much consistent time outdoors or exercising aggressively as what I should. Uh, but I just, just just love it. I, I love doing different things, challenging myself. And uh, and nature has a way of just, just helping you to re-energize and there's, there's so much beauty around. As you know, Sam, I've been traveling a bit and just to see different nature in different countries, and even places like Hong Kong, where you're originally from, uh, most people would go there and you go shopping or you stay out in the city, but it has beautiful beaches, beautiful islands, uh, beautiful mountains, and that there's, there's so much really on offer. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's very cool. Yeah, I guess uh, when it's a good day, it's always good to uh, explore, the, explore the outside nature. So it's really calm and confident. So, uh, so tell me, uh, where have you been recently? So you, you mentioned you've been traveling. Where have you been, David? <clears throat> well, I... Um, I, I've spent the last five and a bit years living overseas, initially in Hong Kong, uh, then in the USA, and uh, in moving back from the USA to Australia, with COVID and everything now, if you pack up your household over there, it can take four or five months to get back here. So I packed up my household and I've moved it back. Uh, and in that time, I spent some time in uh, Mexico and some time in Canada, just whilst I had to live out of a bag, if you're going to have to do it. You might as well do it in a fun place. So I spent a bit of time traveling uh, on my way back home. Mm. Oh, okay, that sounds good. So, so does your how do you spend more? Like, if you're being going overseas, how do you juggle your time with your family? Give uh, spend time with your family. How do you how do you do that like, in terms of? Well, it's a good good question. That's part of the reason why I probably came back. Um, when I was living overseas, I've got a family over here and. I would try once a quarter, so every three months to connect somehow, whether that meant me flying back and catching up with uh, family over here or flying my family over to come and have a mini holiday or something like that. Uh, but of course, through COVID times, that became more difficult. I remember when COVID first hit, yeah. and this was in 2020, and uh, I thought, ah, this will be over and done with in a few months, and we were going to catch up over Easter. 
of 2020. But Easter came and went, and I thought, oh wow, okay, well maybe we'll plan a ski trip in in June or something. But that came and went too. So it, through COVID, it's become a lot more challenging for people to live expat lives. It's harder to connect with family. Yeah. And even now, where Australia and where I was living in the US are, are fairly free in terms of travel, uh, it's still very costly to get onto airlines. And there's a lot of challenges too. A lot of flights that get delayed or cancelled because of uh, crew or passengers who have caught COVID. So not a great time right now to be doing uh, uh, complex international travel uh, but there's some huge pent up demand for it and it's slowly coming back. Mm. Interesting, nice. So where would you say you've been, uh, which country do you, do, you, do you like the most recently? Uh, it's interesting, well, look, I think I've got probably, I, I love the mountains. I love uh, things that are different to what we experience uh, in, in Australia. So uh, some of my favorite countries in the world are New Zealand, Canada and Japan for that reason. Yeah. Japan's always great. It's a little bit quirky as well. It's a different culture. Um, but I've left a part, part of my heart in Hong Kong. It's funny, I've lived on three separate occasions in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I, I, I think I've been blessed to see parts of it that a lot of people haven't. It's got great weather. Uh, I think there's something like uh, 500 islands that make up Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of them very, very small. So they're not huge things, but uh, there are some that are inhabited uh, and uh, have great villages on them. And and of course, when there's an island, that means you've got sea to explore. So uh, Hong Kong also is a great uh, part of the world. Mm. And, what, and what do you, do you like Hong Kong food? Or what's your favourite food there? Love Hong Kong food. Oh. Look, I, look, I love any food. Uh, and uh, uh, I've travelled extensively through China as well. So there's, there's a lot of, and when you say Hong Kong food, yes, you've got the Cantonese, you've got the dim sums and everything else. But uh, Hong Kong is a multicultural city. There's food from all around the world there in all parts of China. So I love the local food. I'll try everything from uh, in the wintertime, the, the snake soup uh, <laughs> through to uh, you know, cold noodles, anything. I, I love all, trying all different foods. Mm. Sounds good. And I'm guessing that you have someone to uh, refer you on this uh, on, on this food and stuff, right? Always. Look, as, as much as you can to get locals to, uh, to show you around is, is great. I also have a lot of friends who will get me to try weird and wonderful foods. Often they're not eating them themselves, but uh, look, I've tried all sorts of unusual animals or unusual dishes and everything, and I'll give anything a go. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite well known for that as well. Oh, really? <laughs> Sounds good, man. Nice. Enjoy it. So tell me about, uh, so what do you currently do for work, David? So I'm, uh, between the, I was uh, working with uh, an international health and wellness company for about uh, oh, seven years uh, and uh, finished that role up in December of last year in the USA. So hence my moving back. But I've just been helping another travel company to launch a global membership uh, club. And that's been very exciting because I mentioned earlier the travel right now, it, there's a lot of pent up demand for, from the uh, pandemic. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of costs to go into travel, uh, either taken up by um, uh, by travel agents who then have to pay staff and have to pay bricks and mortar, uh, leases, etc., or just advertising. You'll see a lot of adverts either online or in papers or uh, on TV. And so the idea behind this travel membership club is that rather than have to uh, uh, have people spending money on advertising and going through travel agents that members could actually book travel directly, particularly cruises and particularly hotels. And that allows them to save between 25 to 50%. And, and that concept is taking off uh, aggressively around the world right now. Wow, interesting. So is it kind of like a uh, network marketing company as well? or is It, it is. So there's an element of, and that, that's, that's also been, for the last 30 odd years, I've been working with uh, home-based businesses and direct selling companies. So there's an element of that as well. Uh, the, the club right now is the largest invite-only uh, travel club in the world. And that invite comes with the opportunity to earn a little bit of uh, revenue too. So you can invite a friend, uh, you can get a little bit of money back and it can grow a little bit more if you've referred five friends or family or, or other folk uh, you get to travel for free. And then if you start to grow it and do some consistent work, you may even get paid to travel. And that's also what's exciting. And uh, advertising or, or travel agents 
or other things and now can be redirected to the member. Cool. Sounds great. Nice. Cool. So um, actually, I think I've heard of that before, like a company that helps uh, with travel agency. I think I've heard of that before somewhere. So this is cool. Yeah. There's been a few uh, companies like that starting. I, I look, the whole world is changing. I, I'm I'm an old man now in some ways. So when I look at my birth date compared to other people, um, but uh, you know, 30 odd years ago, we didn't have the internet. We you wouldn't be Facebook living. You wouldn't be zooming. You wouldn't be doing any of that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and more and more people now are you, you're talking about with the pandemic, the great resignation. People are saying, "Hey, I don't want to be doing a nine to five job anymore." And so more people are either, whether it's Uber driving, whether it's air tasking, whether it's setting up an Airbnb room or something, people are looking for supplemental ways of earning income and also saying, you know, I, I don't, my, my, my life isn't about trying to climb a corporate ladder anymore. I want to be enjoying myself and getting some balance mm. and doing something that I'm passionate about. Mm. So travel clubs, I think you'll see emerging in the future. I think you're going to see more and more um, home-based businesses or social media-based businesses. In some cases, like yourself, you're providing a service. In other cases, with products um, that just become people. People get to connect more with their passion. Yeah. They get to be able to work more in the time spaces that they choose. I think it's a great industry and a great future. Yeah. For sure. For all set. Nice. So, um, to tell me, what got you into like help, helping uh, direct selling companies. Like I remember when I first saw you, like uh, I think we met in uh, a company called Wanna Be. And then, uh, yeah, I just saw you then. I looked up to you because I was the distributor back then and then you were part of the leadership team. And uh, yeah, how, so what made you like uh, devote your life in, like in your career in uh, working for network marketing companies? It's a, well, it's an interesting thing. No, nobody necessarily sets out to create a career in this industry. Well, very few people do. Maybe those who've got parents who've done it and then they want to follow in their footsteps. Yeah. Uh, so I started off my career in Sydney as a chartered accountant for a big uh, accounting firm called Price Waterhouse. Yeah. Uh, and it was interesting because uh, that was a time where superannuation, compulsory superannuation was just starting to come up. Yeah. And I was a young graduate and I was asked to go and research it. And I researched all superannuation. And then I was asked to go to all the partners and explain to them how this thing worked and what we could do. And more and more, I was getting called to go and speak to partners or clients on superannuation. And many of my friends were saying, David, you're so lucky. You don't understand. Just like if everybody's asking for you, you're in demand. You've got this huge, great career ahead of you in superannuation. But to tell you the truth, Sam, super is boring. It's all numbers and it's legislation that changes dramatically. And whilst I, you know, I have had some friends that have remained in that industry, they've earned very big dollars. It was just boring to me. And at the time, one of my clients was a direct selling company wanting to set up in Australia, a company called Newskin. Oh, yeah. And I was fascinated. They had some great quality uh, uh, cosmetic products. And that was, you could relate to that. And what I could also relate to is that that company uh, didn't advertise, just like I was mentioning earlier with this travel company, it wasn't advertising. Instead, it was paying its distributors uh, to grow teams mm -hmm. and when I get to look at that company it, it really impressed me I see these distributors one of whom was a Sydney University Korean student couldn't speak much English yeah. but he really worked very hard at it. Mm -hmm. and I was seeing him earn hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and wow. so the two sides of it well wow. number one it's relatable there's great products that you don't need sort of great degrees to, to understand and use them and number two it's a people business and not everybody, but uh, those who work hard at it can really earn some life-changing income. And since then, never look back. So for me, it's been 30 odd years in the industry. I've spent many years living overseas and, um, you know, it's not a perfect industry. Some people make it out to be get rich quick uh, or oversell what it is. Yeah. But by the same token, I've seen it change a lot of people's lives uh, who otherwise couldn't have done anything else. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Like I've been, uh, I've been, I think I've been doing it for five, four or five years and it's very rewarding what, what the company can do in terms of, and you actually see the benefit of uh, like in terms of passive income wise, personal development and yeah, like in help, help wellness industry, it's good. You've got all the package, which makes you more healthy as well. So correct. 
Hmm, sounds good. So that's cool. Uh, so David, um, what else do you want the viewers to know about you? <laughs> um, look, I, I, I don't know. Like, like, there's one thing that I think may be relevant, and you and I haven't talked about this, but um, I know what you're focusing on mostly is connecting with confidence. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why I, I applauded you for doing it. Um, yeah. And I think that my ability to connect with people, it's not special. It's not, I'm not trying to have a go, but it's probably what has made the difference in my career from being a, uh, what could be called a, a professional or somebody who's a technical person into, and again, I, I don't want to say this it sounds really weird, but to be into leadership roles. Yeah. And, and for me personally, I remember I was, it was year eight, I, I was uh, at school and I was picked to be in a public speaking competition. When I say picked, it was like, okay, who's going to do it? Uh, let McManus do it. Uh, and uh, so I was pretty nervous about it. I wrote out all my sort of, you know, cue cards and everything else like that. And then I went and I practiced, practiced, practiced. I thought I had this thing down pat. But then when I was actually on stage in this auditorium in front of all these people, I pretty much broke down. I, my eyes were watering, my knees were shaking, I, all this speech that I prepared, I, I couldn't quite get through. I, I missed large chunks of it and, and it, it just devastated me. But um, from that time, uh, I, I sort of committed, well, I want to learn how to just have confidence. Now that's connecting with people en masse. That's not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but it's the same thing. It's just, if you and I can speak like this, yep. we should be comfortable enough to speak to strangers we also should be comfortable enough to speak in large groups yeah anyway i, I worked on that on, on that skill and i through school particularly was involved in everything from public speaking and debating and law school um uh, competitions and things like that and, and i feel that that's one of the key differences in my career that's helped me to get to where i've gotten to and enjoyed things that i've enjoyed this is just having that confidence that's why I applaud you because I think it's a great skill to help others enjoy. Mm. Because if you're asked to be a, a leader, leader is all about connecting with people, connecting with one-on-one, -on -one, but it's also connecting with large teams of people. Yeah. And how do you have the confidence to do that? Whether it's a small management team that you're connecting with, whether it's a board of directors, whether it's a stage full of, of uh, your customers. Uh, and so that's the only thing I would say is that, that connecting um it is a skill that you can learn and you can master. Yeah. Uh, I still get frightened if I have to go up on stage and speak in front of people. That's not a bad thing, but uh, I'm sure that athletes competing at the Commonwealth Games right now, they probably get frightened and nervous before they race. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and they, how do you master that? How do you channel that? And if you can learn that skill, uh, it, it will pay huge dividends, whether it's career-wise or whether it's just feeling good about yourself. Yeah. or whether it's taking up uh, great opportunities in life through whatever social uh, interests you have. Mm. So I'm very passionate about that. Mm. That's good. Thanks for the compliment. Yeah, I guess uh, a lot of people need this kind of skill. It's kind of like a life skill that uh, once you learn it, like you'll be able to connect with anyone. So uh, yeah, thanks for, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I guess it's just really about getting yourself out there more, knowing how to market yourself out there with more viral so other people can, uh, yeah. Be exposed to what you do and things like that so that's what i'm trying to work on as well so look, that's that's ultimately where true joy in life comes from it's not what things you amass and maybe you, what experiences you have but if you think back to your fondest experiences in your life it's usually experiences you've had with other people and connecting mm. with other people mm. and a lot of research that will show that you know our longevity even is a function of the, the support groups and the friends we have around us and so at, at our very heart we're not born to be solo we mm -hmm. want to be part of a community and, and having that confidence to connect with it uh, is critical mm. yeah for sure like connecting it's, it's all about connecting with people and putting your network that kind of stuff so it's really cool um yeah i just had i just had that idea i just wanted to help people to improve on their skills so they can connect with anyone so yeah i guess i guess uh, it's pretty good uh, i will keep going and then yeah, see how it goes yeah and david so tell me the second last question is how do you build trust with people? How do you build rapport with people? You're in the direct, direct selling industry. I guess building a relationship with people is key. What's the secret behind that? Uh, well, I think there's two things you asked about how, how to build rapport. Uh, one thing is we're given two ears and one mouth. Yeah. And, and that means listening to other people and, and truly listening. And I remember it was an experience I had. We often had to coach people in the field. Uh, and I remember one time I was just a bit tired when I was talking to somebody. 
And so normally I'd go in there and I'd sort of try to explain all these bits and pieces. I didn't explain much. I just maybe ask questions and let the other person speak. Yeah. But at the end of that particular conversation, uh, the person I was speaking with turned around and said, oh, wow, thank you so much. Thank you for listening to me. It's the first time somebody's gone through it all. This was one of the best meetings I've ever had. And it sort of struck me. I, I didn't do anything. But listening is one of the greatest skills. And to listen with empathy, but listen also with, uh, with, with interest. Because you can be listening, but not processing. But if you're listening and truly then understanding where somebody's coming from, that, that's actually, number one, it's interesting. Yeah. That's how you, I think, you build rapport with other people. Mm. And then you're looking for the, for the common connectivity. Wow, you, you, your Hong Kong background. Wow, we want to be together. Background. And looking at those connection points is, is pretty critical. Yeah. Trust, on the other hand, is something that, that starts with that connection. Um, but it goes far deeper than that. And that, that. That's about living with integrity, about uh, doing what you said you're going to do, not lying, uh, showing that you can give to others and, and uh, by giving, hopefully, uh, they're willing to uh, give something back. So trust is something which is built over time and, and it only comes from uh, operating with integrity. Mm-hmm. Very well said. So what I got from you is pretty, pretty much listening, active listening, and, um, yeah, be able to... Yeah, can have people at a deeper level, which is cool. So that's really cool. Thanks for appreciate your um your your uh your your knowledge. It's very it's very uh straightforward, but it's very true what you said. So, um, and the last question is, how does how how can the viewers uh, know more about you, David? How do, how can they uh, uh connect with you on social media? Are you on social media? Do you have a website? Anything like that? Yeah, look, I don't have a website per se. I have uh, social media, so I, I'm on Facebook on DP Dot Instagram. My, my daughter has set up a, a uh, um, uh, some accounts for me on other platforms and that as well. I think I'm on Snapchat as the world's oh. best dad or something like that, but I don't, don't use that. Uh, and if you want to reach out to me uh, and if you've got any interest in this uh, travel business that we're launching, it's uh, david at incruisers.com mm-hmm. and I can share some more information on that as well. Yeah. Cool. No worries. Yeah, so later on uh, when, I, when, I, uh, when I put this uh, video up, uh, I'll, I'll definitely put all these links up so people can connect with you forever. Perfect. That's good. Well, good on you, Sam. Listen, thanks for having me. I hope in some ways this helped. Uh, <laughs> and again, good luck with everything you're doing. Kudos to you. Keep it up because I think you, 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 you're you teaching a very important skill. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. So yeah, uh, viewers, you know how to connect with David. Uh, he's a very nice guy. And uh, yeah, feel free uh, to connect with him on Facebook. Or are you on LinkedIn as well, David? Or I am on LinkedIn, yeah. I think the same thing. I think it's DP Doc McManus, but I'll give you a link. Yep, no worries, sounds good. And yeah, connect with him. Uh, follow his uh, his business as well. His business looks very interesting. And yeah, David, I had a great time with you. Thanks for joining. I appreciate your precious time with me. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, speak to you in the, in the near future. Fantastic. Good evening, mate. Thank you. All right. All right, so go on.